Hey guys, welcome to Spy Chemistry and today we are doing a very important something called the point group. So point group, what does point group means? Point group means that certain molecule with different uh, 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 different molecule with similar structure having similar symmetry operations are clubbed into a group which tend to follow similar characteristic uh, characteristics properties, some quantum properties and there's a lot you can find actually take out from a character table. So character tables are made out of uh, out for different uh, point groups and that point group we are going to learn today. So that uh, helps you get uh, different dipole moment, IR, Raman, lot of uh, spectroscopic things and uh, it also helps you determine properties of a molecule. So before watching this video, I request you to go back and watch the video. If uh, you haven't watched that video where I've told you about the symmetry operations and then come to back to this video so that we can start the point group. For now, I'll be telling you, uh, so behind me is this uh, table. So in uh, if you look at look on internet, YouTube or whatever, you'll find that uh, they'll draw a club table, but that is actually very difficult to understand. But here I've uh, drawn this table, which is particularly very easy to understand. And uh, this is refer this, uh, this reference table I've taken from book called F. A. Cotton, which is a pioneer, uh, who is actually a pioneer in this field. And that's a really good, good book. You can actually follow that book. So the similar thing I've used here, and this will be more easy to understand. So for now, uh, I'm uh, uh, going aside so that you can take a screenshot and then we'll proceed further. I hope that's okay. So today, uh, now uh, for now, I'll tell you how to go about this table, and then I'll tell you uh, some specific example to how to actually use this table because it's, it's relatively uh, relatively difficult to understand how this works, and then translating it to uh, the application like how to really determine the point group of a molecule because that's more important than understanding this table itself. So let's start the video and for the uh, point group, the first step you should know is that you start, you take your molecule, now you have to know if the, if the your molecule really belongs to something called the spatial group. So there are two types of spatial group, one is the linear molecule, second is the multiple higher order axis molecule. So for uh, linear molecule, you should, some, you should have something like C infinity V or D infinity H. Okay. So if you have some, some axis like C infinity V or a point uh, uh, axis which is D infinity H that belongs to linear molecule. Okay. Linear molecule is what? Something which line maybe HCl, maybe CO2, something like that, which is linear in shape, can have a linear uh, can have a point group something as C infinity V or D infinity H. Now the second special point group is multiple having molecule having multiple higher order axis. What does uh, what does that mean? That if you have a CN where n is greater than two, where n is greater than two, that means you can have C3 multiple higher order, order, order axis that you have more than two or uh, more than two C3s. Like in tetrahedral there are four C3s. And sure, n is greater than 2, which is C3, and there are 4 of them. So similarly, if you have some high order uh, uh, principal axis, which are multiple in number, you can say that the molecule will es essentially belong to the point group, such as TH, TD, OH, etc., which is I actually are rare. Like, they won't give you some a molecule like this, rarely, but it's, it's important. Like tetrahedral and octahedral are the most important ones. Then step two: if you don't for if you if if does if it doesn't belong to a special group, it will belong to you. Uh, the second step is you should search if there are no CN or no S or SN. CN is there in your molecule. There is no principal axis or there is absolutely no uh, improper axis of rotation. So then your molecule will belong to something called the C I uh, C one C S C I uh, point group. Okay, so what does C C uh, C one mean? That means that your molecule only have something called E. E is identity. It doesn't have anything any other operation other than E. Then your molecule uh, 
your molecule actually belongs to something called the C1 point group. Okay. What does CS mean? S means sigma. So if your molecule doesn't have anything else, like if it has E and let's just say it has some sigma H, then it belongs to a point group called CS because S belongs to sigma. It doesn't have any other operation because E is the operation which will present every time. Okay. But along with E, if you have sigma, any kind of sigma H, sigma H, sigma V, sigma D, anything at all, it will belong to something called the CS. What is CI? CI, if you in your molecule you have only E and I, nothing, uh, uh, no other operation other than E and I, that, uh, that it will belong to something called the CI point group. Okay. Now, if these two are not present, the th third step is the if it only have the something called the improper axis of rotation. So that means if your molecule doesn't have any proper uh, principal axis of rotation, it just have some E or SN, no CN, correct? Then it will belong to something called the SN point group, right? No CN, just E and some improper axis of rotation. Next one is very important. If you don't have any three, then you follow the step four. You ask yourself, is there any uh, principal axis which is not a simple consequence of SN to N axis? What does that mean? I mean that if I have a CN axis, that there should be there should have only one CN axis and it is not due to SN axis. As you can see that if I have something like S4, let's just say S4. Okay, that essentially means it's ha it has a C4, sigma H, correct? And this C4 is not the principal axis. It should have a only one C4, correct? The molecule itself should have only one C4. This C4 should not come from S4. If it independently have a one C4 and other uh, other any operation, it's fine. But the C N axis should not be a consequence of S N two axis because S N two axis will uh, if C4 is there, there should be some C2 also. But for it to belong to uh, 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 step four, it should say that there should be a one, only one and only one principal axis which is not due to any other S N axis in the point uh, molecule. Okay. So then if this step follows, then you ask yourself a question. If my molecule have n number of C2s, which are perpendicular to the CN axis. Okay. N number of, this is not n C2. This means that there are, if this is, if this is, uh, I would say if that's, uh, I would say if that's C3, I mean, if there are three C2s perpendicular to this C3, you're getting me. You ask yourself if my molecule actually have NC2's perpendicular to C principal axis, then you ask if the answer is yes, you go this way. If the answer is no, you go that way. Let's assume first that your there, if, uh, if you have a principal axis as C3, and then you have two principal uh, uh, perpendicular axis as 3C2, uh, okay. So if the, your answer is yes, that means now you ask yourself, does it have a sigma H? If it has a sigma H, your your molecule belong to a point group called DNH. So in this case, you had a principal axis of C3. So this will be C3H. Now, if there is no sigma H, if there is N sigma Ds, like if there are three sigma Ds, if it has three sigma Ds, then it will be DND, which will be 3D3. The point group will be D3D, okay? And, uh, now you ask if there is no sigma H, no sigma D, and you find that there is absolutely no sigmas, then you can call it point group DN. So here it will be D3. Because I assume that the principal axis is C3. Now you follow the step 4. You ask yourself, are there NC2s perpendicular to CN? You find that there are no NC2s perpendicular to CNs. Then you go this way. First you ask yourself that if my molecule has sigma H, if it has a sigma H, then it will follow something called CNN. So this will be C3H. Correct? If it has N sigma Vs, then you can call it C3V. CNV, you will call it as C3V. If there are absolutely no sigmas, no sigma H, no sigma V, you can call it as CN. That will be C3. So that that's how it goes. So now we look some, now we will look uh, on some examples so that how to go about this table okay